I needed to escape. I could never get out of the business. I realized I was going to be trading time for money forever as much as I enjoyed it. There were some moments of frustration. It's long hours, CPA. You can end up doing long hours all year round if you do it right, meaning you've got unlimited work, but that's not what I wanted to do. And I had to get out at some point if I wanted to make a meaningful change and be able to prioritize other things like my marriage. That's where I was able to step away and that was helpful. Are you about to start a podcast or producing a podcast and tired of doing the editing yourself? We have produced over 1,000 daily shows and the production team that I've created, they're now available to produce shows for you as well. We can do as little or as much as you need from finding and communicating with guests, preparing introductions, to editing the audio and video. You will sound better, have a more professional presence, and be able to spend your time doing other valuable tasks on your business. Let me know you're interested by emailing me directly at Whitney at LifeBridgeCapital.com. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. I am so thankful you have chosen to listen again today, and I hope that you will continue to listen. Hope you have liked and subscribed to the show. I'll be forever grateful for that and just your support. I hope you are learning a lot and your business is growing because of it. Well, today I have an exciting guest for you. and We're actually doing a series of shows with this guest where, man, he is going to share many details with you that I know where you're going to learn a lot from. So his name is Keith Blackboard. He worked as a CPA and reached financial freedom within 10 years due to success as an investor and tax strategist. Keith and his wife, Jessica, have experience with domestic and international investments, including residential and commercial real estate, lending, startups, and paper assets. Keith served as a director of acquisitions for a hedge fund that transacted the largest private sale of homes in U.S. history. Keith has so much experience. He has educated himself in so many ways, but he has a CPA background, tax strategist background. So you're you're going to hear a lot today about how he built that business, but also selling that business. Man, the things that come along with that. But over the next few days, you know, you're going to hear some details from him, uh, creating investment opportunities to managing those, to deal pipelines, to tax strategies that I bet you have not heard of before. So you're going to learn a lot from Keith. Uh, he has an amazing group uh, that they mastermind together, to learn about investing, encourage you to look that up. He gives the details of that after each segment also. Uh, so please look him up. I know you're going to learn a lot. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, I appreciate a, a, a like. Uh, I hope you've subscribed to the show on YouTube and you are learning a lot. Reach out if we can assist you or if you have ideas for ways that we can improve the show. Have a blessed day. Keith, welcome to the show. I've heard so many great things about you and the community that you've built as well of investors. I mean, you've become somebody that's extremely knowledgeable in this space. And I'm wanting to learn from you. I know the guests are wanting to learn from you today and just your level of experience. And so give us though a little more about who Keith is, your background. I mean, you retired at age 32. So, I mean, we're wanting to dive into that. I know the listeners, they want to do the same if they're not older than that already. And so let's learn who Keith is. Sure. Thank you. Thanks for that invite. Jumping forward, jumping right in. I grew up in California. My wife is originally from Honduras. We met in a Belgium salsa club of all places in Belgium. And so we just kind of traveled through Europe as part of a, a studying abroad as part of that. And that's where we first connected. So after college, went to work for Deloitte, got the big fancy job, was a CPA, that working at a company like that means you're working 70 to 100 hour weeks consistently, and that'll burn you out quickly. So I went to Dallas in 2010, heard of a guy, you may have heard of him, Robert Kiyosaki, spoke at a convention. So learned rich dad, poor dad, real estate investing. And so I got really interested in real estate. We didn't quite sign up for his program, but found another way to get involved, the LOCA program. And we started buying rentals and flips in 2010. And along the way, I started a CPA firm focused on high net worth real estate investors. So 2013 rolls around, we did active and passive investments in hotels and apartments. And that allowed us to scale quickly. We first started investing at age 25. So starting in 2010, age 25, just diving both feet, no kids. We went headlong into work. 
my CPA business grew uh, 100% plus every single year I was in business, except the last year only 50% because we were maxing out. And so along the way, I was able to apply some hack strategies that I had learned from previous places I'd worked that were really advanced. And as a result, I built up a niche around apartment syndicators. So a lot of people who teach or gurus out of the Dallas area are former clients of mine. 2015 rolls around. If we weren't working, we were traveling. We got to that number when we first started in real estate. I wanted $10,000 a month in passive income. And by 2014, we were definitely there. And my wife was like, okay, we're good. And I said, I want to keep going because I think part of my pride and everything else was tied up in the business. So we kept building. And along the way, I realized I could never escape the business. If we won't work, we were traveling. We had some fun with that. But when you have a client that's trying to close an eight or nine figure transaction, despite having staff and systems and processes, I felt like I had to be available. And so that led to some hardships. 2016, we were on the brink of a divorce. Mm-hmm. And I was really had a choice. I could either continue to grow a business and have all the successful signs of wealth and everything that goes along with that, or I could make some major life changes. And I ultimately chose to prioritize the marriage and family. I also thought as part of that decision that Hillary Clinton was going to get elected and the real estate market was going to crash. I was wrong. But we ended up selling out a lot of our stuff that year. And we just went, we went from there, we sold out. I put money with some of my best clients. I knew who the best performing syndicators were. And we just spent the next few years traveling the world. Incredible. Well, hats off to you for making that choice, right? To prioritize your family. I'm grateful for that. The listeners know me well enough now to know that's I'm going to just man, tell you how great that is. And so I want to ask you, obviously, a number of questions about what you said there. You know, you did, you had the fancy job. You went down the path that probably many of the listeners did as well or have, right? It's what we were all kind of taught that that's what successful people do, right? Where we get this secure quote, right? J-O-B and man, you know, we're making some money. You got those benefits, but you know, you heard Robert Kiyosaki, like many of us as well, or read that book, right? And it's like, boom, you know, it's like, what? <laughs> you know, like just change the way we thought about our income and our jobs, to say the least. But okay, I want to dive in there a little bit there on the you achieved 10k a month. That was your goal, and maybe you can break down a little bit how you a little more about what provided that 10k. What were the types of investing, or and maybe would you suggest that now for that for the listener that's hey you know that's saying hey Keith, I would love to have 10k a month in passive income. You know, what, or maybe that's changed now or has it in what you would say, hey, to achieve 10K a month, this is what I would do now. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot there. So for us, it was initially rentals. I looked at the market and I saw where opportunities were. Part of my decision, part of it was I stumbled into it. And then part of it was also seeing some opportunity. When I had people telling me that you could not build the houses at the price you could buy them for, that seemed like a good opportunity to get in. I was also young. I could lose everything multiple times and still be okay by retirement. So it felt like it was worth the risk. And in the beginning, the way we ran some of our finances is we were tight using lines of credit, things like that, but allowed us to do more. And thankfully it worked out. There were some riskier things that we did. What allowed us to truly grow fast was concentrating in one thing And we've since diversified. I'm happy to talk more about that later. But concentrating, putting all our time and effort into something really made a big difference. Real estate market today, I think with rising interest, it's a bit, there's some risk. I think anytime you're actively involved in something, you can mitigate those risks. And I still think real estate is a good investment. This is probably a little, not as good of a time to buy as it was in 2010, 2012. And so there may be other places that are more favorable with economic winds. Happy to dive into that as a separate part. But knowing where the economic winds are, knowing where you've got experience and kind of lining all that up helps me decide where I want to invest and see the opportunities. That's awesome. Yeah, and we will. Uh, Just so the listener knows, we're going to do a a series, a number of shows here with Keith, and we're going to dive into a few of these topics that he is an expert in and how he's accomplished this. But while we're still on this topic right now, because I'm so passionate about it, and I feel like it's so important, 
you know, is the decision you made, right? To prioritize family versus business. And and I'll just say, you know, share as much or little, right? As you're willing, don't, as I put you on the spot, right? But share, you know, as much or little, because I feel like it's such a common path for entrepreneurs, right? And you're so driven. Actually, I just spoke in an investor conference on Friday about this exact thing. And so it's something that I'm passionate about because I can be so driven, right? And we're just like, go, 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 go. And before you know it, you know, we're sacrificing the ones who we claim, right? Quote, we're doing all this for, right? And so speak to that decision, right? And maybe that somebody that's listening right now is struggling with this as well. And they're like, well, wait a minute, Keith, you know, I got to keep the business going. I've got to work, you know, all this. How did you work through that? And maybe you can help the listener a little bit as well. So for me, it was about being really intentional. I went through a period of time where I was less intentional and I let the business carry me. I got caught up in all the work, all the success. But one thing I learned is just because you have more money, I was around enough ultra high net worth people, people with eight, nine figure net worths. They're not necessarily happier. They've got new and different problems that come along with it. And money does solve a number of other problems, but there's also some new challenges that can come with it. But the main takeaway was they weren't happier. They still had issues with their marriage. They still had issues with their kids. And if I didn't fix my foundation, if I wasn't really rooted in the values, then more money wasn't going to help. And so I felt like I had to slow down, back up and really decide what was important to me. And that for me was my marriage at that point. And I I would love to say that we have it all together, but there are still challenges that come with that. Post-travel, we got the best souvenir we could have had out of all of that. And that was our firstborn son, who is now three years old, and we now have a six-year-old. And so there's been a tremendous amount of reconciliation that has gone through that. But I had to work through some of my own selfishness. Having young kids will also force you to work through some of your own stuff. Wife, we both still have our stuff, but... We went through a period of counseling, uh, getting plugged into our church was hugely helpful. And I would say, ultimately, Jesus is the reason why we're still together. It would have been very easy for us to become a statistic, but I've learned that it's really worth fighting for. I believe it's worth fighting for. And I respect those longer I've been married, the more I respect those who have been married longer than me because I realize how hard it is. But at the same time, similar to kids, it's a ton of work, but it's so worthwhile. It's so fulfilling. It's through the hard stuff, there's a certain sweetness that comes with it. You asked about some of the stuff that we worked through. For me, it was some about getting a priority straight. And for me, I love the business. It's what I'm, I feel like I'm gifted at. I like doing it, but I don't want to do it at the expense of life. I want to enjoy the journey. That was my wife's mantra. Enjoy the journey because the only destination is the grave. So you can spend this whole time building but ultimately you're gonna give it to somebody else who may do well with it or may squander it. But eventually, whether it's 50 years or two or three centuries, that fortune is gonna pass away. There's gonna be somebody that comes along who doesn't manage it well. So that can't be my legacy. The best legacy I can have is pouring into my kids and sharing those vision with not only my kids, but others around me. And that's a little bit why I'm doing financial journey today as a way to give into others. There was also some other things I had to work through that I worked through with the church as part of it, but there was a lot of house cleaning that had to happen in my heart to get to where we are. And I have to do regular maintenance on that as well. Love that. I just appreciate your transparency. You know, you said we still don't have it all together. And I think if any of us are honest, we we still don't, none of us have it all together, right? No matter what it looks like on the outside, no matter what your website looks like, right? Or your Facebook page. And, you know, we're still all a work in progress. I as well, man, if it hadn't been for the Lord, my wife and I would not be where we're at, would probably not be together. You know, it's just, we look back and think, Lord, like they just, it wasn't possible without you, right? To sustain us and so many times, right? And so just appreciate your transparency and just being real about that because it's a continual thing I hear about from many entrepreneurs, right? And the more entrepreneurs I meet, the more people who quote are successful, right? You know, as the world would say, you know, are successful, man, it takes a lot of time, right? Commitment. And unfortunately, it's often at the sacrifice of our family. So it's a real thing. And I'm just grateful for your you speaking to to that and being real about it. 
And so I also want, let's talk a little bit about, you know, you CEO of wealth business, you know, or even selling your business, right? I think through that a little bit, what did that look like to sell your business? And I'm sure that, you know, there's maybe others that are listening right now who have a business and maybe it's not even in real estate as well, right? And they're, they're wanting to get into real estate. Talk about that plan or probably an emotional process of selling this thing you're, you know, you built and just the exit strategy. Yeah, I'm happy to talk tactical, legal strategy. That's that's often something I work with and people on is how to package your business, sell for the highest sales price possible, minimize the taxes. But you can talk to business brokers. There's multiple people who talk you through that part. Very few will actually help you package it up and help with the tax consequences. But I really want to focus on more the emotional side. For me, I went from a business where I was overwhelmed owned it, had employees, wanted to make sure the employees were taken care of. Really, it was my baby that I built with all sorts of things that I was very proud of. Ultimately, a buyer looks at it a little differently. They're usually primarily concerned with the financials and how much money it's going to make them and less concerned about all the work or creativity you put into it. Usually, a business is a representation of many hours of effort. And so it's something you've built. And so letting go with that also meant I had to part ways with some client relationships and vendors and other business partners, the people that I worked with in various ways. And that was hard for me. For me, I've realized, especially after the fact, a lot of my ego was tied up in the business. I would say before that, I didn't think I had much of an ego, but going from business sale, there was a transition period where I still had to help or stay on to make sure that the business transitioned well. But after that six-ish month period expired, it was quiet. It was crickets. I had a very full bank account. I needed to invest it someplace. But I went from a ton of people needing me that I felt really respected by to nobody. And I didn't really know what to do with myself. And some might suggest you go in and you jump into the next thing. I suggest it's actually healthier to be okay with that stillness. Go do something. For us, we did some travel as part of that. Just get out and kind of it was the first time in my life where I didn't have to work. I didn't have to do anything for an extended period of time. I was set for life. I was good. And so what do I do next? And so before I just jumped into building the next thing, we went on and really had to do some self-assessment, work with the Lord. What does God want us to do? What could we do? Do we even want to do something? And it was a couple of years before we even worked on, on anything significant. And there was a growing process that went through that, that we would never would have gotten had we not done that. How did you know it was time to sell? The main reason for me was I needed to escape. I could never get out of the business. I realized I was going to be trading time for money forever. As much as I enjoyed it, there were some moments of frustration as long hours, CPA, you can end up doing long hours all year round if you do it right, meaning you've got unlimited work, but that's not what I wanted to do. And I had to get out at some point if I wanted to make a meaningful change and be able to prioritize other things like my marriage. That's where I was able to step away. And that was helpful for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And you mentioned, I appreciate you mentioning like the emotional side of selling the business, right? And you talked about like employees that respected you, you know, that you spent so much time with and probably helped groom and train and right. And, you know, you work so much one-on-one -on -one with these folks. Speak to that a little bit, how you kind of made that separation with the employees as well. Yeah. So first with the buyer, I had to show contracts that people weren't going to just walk away from the business or they couldn't steal all the clients. There was that whole piece. And then separately, I had multiple interested buyers. I wanted somebody who was going to take care of the employees, that it would be a good cultural fit. So when dating potential buyers, I wanted to know that it would fit, that the clients would fit, that they had experience with these kinds of clients. And so it wasn't, it was with the employees really trying to show them a future and a path forward with the new company. But I didn't want to tell them about the sale until after it was done. The reason is, if you tell people about a sale before it's done, the employees start looking elsewhere because they're fearful of who the new buyer is. And it's frankly, it's hard to do, but I think it's best to keep it a secret up until after the sale. And then I took a few key employees privately out to breakfast, one-on-one, -on -one, 
This is what we're going. This is what it means for you. This is how I see opportunity for you. This is a potential raise you're going to get by staying on if you stay on through this period and finding incentives for them to stay on for a longer period of time is key for that transition. Because often when you're selling a business, part of the sales price is based on revenue staying at or above a certain level. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate just you taking it one on one with them, right? And seeing the ways to incentivize them, but also the ways that they're going to benefit by staying and just caring for them, right? Just in that relationship. And so one other thing I wanted to go back to before we close out this segment is, you know, you mentioned something that uh, seemed important to you. It's very important to me as well. And I appreciate you being real about, hey, you know, we're going to build this wealth. And eventually, you know, it's not going to last forever right? You know, there's probably going to be somebody down the line that just squanders it or whatever happens, right? However, you talked about the best legacy you can leave, you know, is pouring into your kids. It's something I'm very passionate about and trying to strive to learn the best practices around that. A guy I recently interviewed, or I've gotten to know a little bit, Jim Shields. I don't know if you know him, but he wrote the book called The Family Board Meeting. And there's, uh, you know, it's about, you know, having a quarterly meeting with each individual child, right? And he kind of goes through a process of doing that. So it's fun. And, you know, it's just building that relationship. But I wondered, you know, are there any techniques around how you are doing that, you know, with your kids now or anything you've instilled that says, you know, hey, this is how I'm leaving that legacy? They're training them. So right now, my kids are still young. So right now, it's just about learning manners or please, I thank you. Even this morning, it was, I need this. I need that. And I understand what they get it from because we often tell them, you need to go to bed. You need to eat. And so they learn that language from us. So one, trying to demonstrate that language for them as both to them, speaking to them in a way that's respectful. But it's really about values at this point. In time, there's some more financial stuff that I will do and I want to lead them and I want to show them have an opportunity to go into sort of business to walk through that at age appropriate levels. Awesome. Keith, I appreciate your just desire and focus right on the family and your kids and the legacy. It's not just about wealth, you know, or just about that creation of wealth long term, but that there are other things that are higher priority. Keith, why don't you tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you? We're going to sure. uh, close this segment out today and I hope the listeners stick around because they're going to hear us talk about numerous things. Keith has become an expert in just understanding investment opportunities and strategies and deal flow and tax strategies as well that we're going to get into over the next couple of days. So Keith, how can the listeners get in touch with you and share that with them? And we're going to continue again tomorrow. Sure. So we've got something called the Wealth Builder Experience. And you can go to my website. We'll, we, I'm sure we can include the link in the show notes. And it's really about how do you make wealth the business? Often I find so many business get caught up in making money that they miss the opportunity to become wealthy. So if the primary reason you're in business is for a financial purpose, then there's a key transition most business owners miss. And that is making wealth the business. So along your way, some way through, probably in your 40s, late 30s, somewhere along there, after you've had that business likely five to 10 years, you've got to start putting money into other assets and learning how to manage almost like your own family office. If people are, are, are familiar with that, I show people who have in that three to $70 million range, how to build their own family office. As part of that, how do you manage alternative investments? into a cohesive portfolio where you find those great deals. And it's really about making wealth the business. There's a quick visual if you're okay with it. I'd love to yeah, share. please. And making wealth the business, your work, your career, your business all feed up into initially growing that income. And then in time, where how do we convert tax efficiently and intentionally though that those funds into assets that can be your real estate your stocks your houses whatever it is and then lastly you've got three different divisions your last division is your personal finances your lifestyle your fund your giving not to say that wealth business is the most important thing but this orientation merely recognizes the impact all the divisions have on it so when you start to realize wealth is the business then your work getting caught up with your business isn't necessarily the most important thing ever. It continues to grow, but you start to look at things holistically and it changes your perspective and priorities as part of that. 
Awesome. Keith, that's incredible. I hope the listeners know, hey, if you're looking on YouTube, you can see the image that he just showed up, showed on the screen. And also we'll try to put that image on the show notes as well. And so that way you can see it right there on the website. There'll be links to everything he is talking about also. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for being with us again today. I hope you have liked and subscribed to the show. Please tell your friends about the Real Estate Syndication Show. And I hope that you are learning and growing. Don't forget to go to lifebridgecapital.com where you can start investing today.